Hello there, Lisa Almond Baldwin here with Authenticity and Purpose, and today I'm coming to you with some simple steps to help you not just survive, but thrive in the midst of change. Now, as we all know, our world has been completely turned on its ear this past 15 months, and we're not quite sure if what we're in now is our new normal, or if there's a new normal to come. We're still in the midst of this pandemic, there's things going on in the world as far as racial tensions, there's wars going on, all of these things. And it just really comes down to our spirit and makes us think that we just are trying to survive every day, just trying to get through every day. But the truth is, no matter what's going on, no matter if we're in the midst of any of that or have things going on in our personal lives, we still can find ways to move through that in, in, in ways that are helpful and beneficial, especially for those of you who are meeting planners, board chairs, conference coordinators, key decision makers. Your, your whole way of, of working was completely blown up when this pandemic started. You were used to doing everything in person and all the different things that you had to coordinate and you had to come up with a completely different way of operating. And I'm sure that you found some ways to do things. You may have done everything online. You may be already going back in person, but still your stress level may be a little bit high and you still want to find ways to thrive through this and not just survive. So I'm going to offer you my five simple steps for not just surviving, but thriving in the midst of change. So first step here is to take some time. What is preventing you from moving forward. Because when we're going through change, a lot of what we're going through is fear. Fear that we're not going to be able to keep up. Fear could be fear of unworthiness. We might be dealing with some anger. We might be we're definitely dealing with stress. Uh, we might be dealing with coworkers who are just out of their element and are not dealing with stress very well. Okay. So we want to just, and so we get stuck. And we don't know how to move forward. So we want to really take some time to discover what is preventing us from moving forward. We might find that the thing that we're resisting is totally different than what we thought it was in the first place. And maybe it's not a thing at all. Maybe it goes much deeper into a learned pattern of behavior or avoidance. So step number one is to take some time to discover what is preventing you from moving forward. Step number two is to identify the specific emotions and feelings you're experiencing around this particular change or around what's going on in your job or around what's going on with your coworkers or your boss. And allow yourself to feel the full range of those emotions from sad to happy, angry to content. Let them all come forth and just give them the space to breathe. Don't try to, to analyze them or if you should be having these feelings and emotions or how to change them. Just let them come up. Just let them come up and see what happens and, and identify what's going on. Because we walk around all day with, how are you, Susan? Fine. How are you, David? Oh, I'm good. No, not really. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of feelings and emotions going on. We're complex people. So just take some time to let them come forward and just take a look at them. Don't, don't stress yourself about them. So that's step number two. Step number three is to share your emotions and feelings with someone you trust, someone who will hold sacred space for you and allow you to be heard. So when you do that, it just um, helps connection with another human being, but also you're likely to find that you're not the only one experiencing those emotions or feelings or going through the same or similar change in your job, in your role, in planning your next event. So share your feelings and emotions with someone that you trust, someone who will hold sacred space for you and allow you to be heard. So that's step number three. Step number four is look for the lessons and blessings hidden within all of these changes and circumstances. There are always lessons and blessings within. Take some time to find them, embrace them, Make them your new focus or mantra. Stand firm in knowing that they're there to help you in your higher and greatest good in your job, right? You may have learned a totally new way of, I don't know, contacting um, vendors 
for your event. You might have found an even better way for managing um, the flow, the workflow of people. There's all, all kinds of lessons and blessings, but if we're stuck in fear and stuck in, I can't move forward, we can't even look at those lessons and blessings. So that's step number four, is to take some time to look for the lessons and blessings. Step number five is take some time to tap into the positive energy around the things you can control. There are so many things we can't control, and we know that. And things seem to be spiraling, but there are a lot of things we can control. We can control eating healthy foods. We can control um, getting exercise. We can control, we can help other people. Other people are struggling as well. There's always we can help. We can donate money to an organization doing wonderful work in the world. There's so many things that we can control. So take some time to tap into the positive energy around that. Because we know this too shall pass. Maybe not as fast as we want it to, but it will pass. So that's step number five. So those are my five steps to help you not just focus on surviving, but thriving in the midst of change.